Hello, and welcome to Gain Control of Your Business's Finances, a masterclass empowering business owners to get off that money shame train and ultimately take their business to the next level. We are here to swing the door wide open and spill the tea. So grab your favorite cup of tea and let's make a deal. Commit to taking one action after you watch this interview. I'm your hostess, Audrey Heesh, and it is my pleasure to present Jen Mon. Jen is a mentor and healer is a mentor for healers, coaches, and conscious feminine leaders ready to activate their gifts, embody prosperity, and create a legacy. She brings her experience as an energy and wellness intuitive, holistic health and life coach, licensed spiritual healer, teacher, and life coach trainer to her programs and retreats. She is the host of the podcast, Body and Soul Wisdom, creator of the Feminine Leadership Method, Five Element Wealth, Prosperity, Soul Wisdom Imprinting, and the Embodied Feminine CEO, and, and Illuminate Your Soul Retreats, which sounds amazing. She coaches, mentors, and educates high-achieving and soul-driven female coaches and entrepreneurs to redefine success and wealth through the energetic alignment. Clients arrive by seeking clarity, alignment, balanced energy, joy, and fulfillment in their life by harnessing the energy of healing, transmuting, and so transmuting saboteurs, owning body and soul wisdom, and clarity to step into our unique soul wisdom legacy. Through her own life experiences and health crises, she has mastered creating the foundation for a blueprint that is an energetic vibrational match for the highest expression of our soul's signature and the creator of a six-step process, soul wisdom imprinting. And she is here to talk about rewri rewriting, please excuse my, here to talk about rewriting your money origin story through identifying your money saboteurs. Welcome, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. That was such a nice introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. This is going to be wonderful because money saboteurs is something that I feel everyone can relate to mm -hmm. on some level. So what do you have for us today? What are What is a money saboteur and how can we get past it? Yeah, I just want to start by just saying I love the divine timing of all of this because I I literally just got off a call with my personal coach around like the intention the and the energy behind the finances in my own business. So mm -hmm. I want to speak to this in just saying that you know this that that money has is an energy and it's it is also multidimensional just like us as beings and that clarity energy loves clarity and so if we're talking about money today we can just kind of think today i want to invite listeners to step into the space that every money's the tangible thing money's the external thing that reflects back to us our internal belief system and so it's not really about the money. It's not really about the food for the person who wants to lose weight. It's not really, oh, it's not really about the external tangible thing, but that tangible thing is reflecting back to us what our belief system is. And so that's when the sat that's where the saboteurs really come into place. And what we begin to notice, and I'll cover the saboteurs and I'll cover some of the areas of the biggest money block, specifically for business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, we could dive into the four levels to financial freedom, but I want to invite everybody in this conversation to really think in terms of, of energy and that where your intention goes, energy flows, and money is an energy. When we dive into the, the saboteurs, what we notice is that this the saboteur is, we're speaking in a, about a behavior. So we're not really talking about we're going beyond the beliefs, right? Like it's more than just identifying the limiting quote belief that we've all heard about. And it's taking a step, the next step and being like, okay, I noticed that I have this particular money block. And I'll just list briefly the ones that I see the most in the industry that I work in is working hard equals success. 
So right there, the block is actually that you believe that being busy and overwhelmed is going to create you financial freedom. But the truth is, is that energetically, you're, you're misaligned because you're so busy, your calendar is so full, you're not open to receiving opportunity to take you forward. Um, another one is that money isn't spiritual, right? So this would be more, I've been in the coaching industry for 12 years, and I'm also as you shared, energy healer, yoga teacher. So this is more for the people in that industry, um, just believing that money isn't spiritual, which I think it is very spiritual because we get to use that money, that energy to then amplify our voice and values into the world and to contribute to the collective consciousness as a whole to elevate to the values that we hold. We're saying, yes, Organic produce is necessary. I'm going to invest in it. Yes, my well-being is important. I'm going to support the yoga teachers, the gyms, the nutritionists, the people who support well-being because I value that and it's important. Another area of blocks is just the beliefs that we have about wealthy people. Wealthy people are selfish, greedy, narcissistic, um, self-centered or wealthy people were are lucky. They were born into it, meaning it's not for me. It's just those people. So really limiting ourselves by not uh, recognizing that we are the creators and we are the source of our time and money and saying like, oh, those wealthy people, that's them. That's not me. So that would be another area. That would be the third area of blocks. Another area would be just um, beliefs about money in general. Money is evil. Money changes people. Money causes divorce. And of course, all of these are based on things that happened in our childhood. So it we may have heard, it's really important to identify your money origin story. What are the things that you heard growing up? What did your parents say about money? Was it available? Was it scarce? Did it create divorce? Did your parents fight over it? Uh, you know, just kind of really checking into where did all this come from in the first place um another one would be uh just fears around scarcity and and debt or maybe even shame around debt maybe you've had an experience in your life where uh there wasn't and you didn't feel there was enough available or maybe you went into debt or and and you have you're still carrying that energy that shame around it so those are some areas of blocks the blocks help us to create a mindset shift. If we want to take it a little bit deeper, we want to get into and we want to step into financial freedom. We have to take it further into the embodiment, the embodiment of the shift. So going beyond the blocks. And this is really where the saboteur comes in. It's it's identifying like what is my money saboteur and how does she show how does she show up? What is she keeping me from doing? And then we can, we also get to be curious on what other areas of my life am, am I holding myself back or being blocked from opportunity and receiving? Because what I notice in the work that I do is that a lot of times when women have blocks around money, it's really about receiving. And it might be because they overwork or hustle or they whatever those those six blocks I listed come up. Um, and sometimes that it's showing up in their relationships, their romantic relationships with their partners. They're blocking themselves from receiving love or maybe even just blocking themselves from receiving compliments. Like how often do you say, and yeah, I've gotten really good in the past couple of years. Somebody gives me a compliment. I used to be like, oh, thanks. Now I'm like, I breathe in the words and I'm like, thank you. I'm receiving that. And I really allow myself to feel the words that the people are complimenting you with. So the, the saboteurs are the people pleaser. So the people pleaser is the one who might spend money for validation. And you might notice that the people pleaser shows up in other areas of your life. Um, another one is the fixer, the rescuer. So always trying to fix something in their life. It could it could be financially, it could be in a relationship. Um, another money saboteur is the martyr. So the martyr is like the person, again, who's trying to fix things, but it's a little bit of a different intention. Um, the the fixer is a rescuer. The martyr is more the person who gives, but expects something in return subconsciously. 
Um, the fourth money saboteur is the victim, the person that no matter what, there's never going to be enough. It's always somebody else's fault. They never take ownership. Uh, and each of these, and there, there are more, but each of these, uh, I'd be happy to, to share the ebook on this too, since we're diving straight into money saboteurs. Each of these have a certain spending style. Each of these have a certain language that they use and it shows up in their business and their both their profession their professional and their personal life another one of the saboteurs is the tyrant so she's the one that controls everything she's very image focused she doesn't trust people she's a very good at tracking and budgeting but she doesn't trust so she has to hyper control everything and she's super focused on the money only um she doesn't believe people are there to really help her. She thinks she has to do it all. It's just her. And again, she's super image focused. She can be very charismatic. Um, and she's often the one who is the reason that we have beliefs that wealthy people are selfish and, you know, uh, greedy and that type of thing. Uh, another, the sixth uh, money saboteur is the free spirit. So the free spirit is in the spiritual communities, which I have traveled through over the past 15 years as a yoga teacher, meditation, breathwork facilitator, and retreat facilitator. This is the one where we hear, oh, I'm just going to manifest. And it's just going to come to me magically. Like, no, manifestation does not work like that. Manifestation is an energy that you you align to, you recognize the belief that didn't work, you align to the energy of who you're becoming, and then you take aligned action. You get clear, because remember, energy loves clarity. So that would be the sixth one. And then the seventh saboteur, saboteur is the saver. So this one really kind of makes me giggle a little bit, because many of us might be able to relate to parents or grandparents who were this way, because I think about my grandmother. She grew up during the depression. So, and then my parents were baby boomers and I was born in the seventies. So some of it is timing in just kind of where we are collectively with, you know, and kind of what's happening in the world. Some people believe that we're in a recession right now. And I know plenty of people that are creating more income than they've ever created. So there's, there's always like, a perception of the experience but the saver is the one who um buys three of something because it's on sale so they think they're saving but they're really spending more money right like okay but you're really spending more money because you just bought three you didn't actually really save the saver is also the person who struggles to invest in themselves and so they might say say things like um, I just don't have those resources to, it's it's all scarcity and lack consciousness. Anytime we say, I don't have, you're, it's really disempowering. And so the saver is really the one who doesn't invest in herself um, or invest in the right things. Like she's she's not investing for sustainable growth. She's expecting quick fixes and she, but she hardly does it. And um, like I said, she's, she won't, you know, pay for the monthly acupuncture, it's $100, but she'll pay for the $100 yoga pants type of thing, if they're on sale type of thing. So I really like to invite people into um, to step out of scarcity and lack consciousness, because what what you think and believe become your actions becomes your life experience. And into the growth mindset or the consciousness of what I call prosperity and the foundation for prosperity is really the embodied trust. But instead of, it's really like taking ownership that you're the source of your time and your money. And here's what I mean by that. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. So when I hear somebody say they're too busy, what they really mean to say is that's not a priority for me at this time. So an empowering way to look at that is to know what your values are and to only say yes to the things that are aligned with your values and to say no to the things that are not. But it's very disempowering and it shows misalignment to say I'm too busy for that because, well, you get to choose how you use your time. So what are you saying? Like it matters or it doesn't matter. And I always ask myself three questions. Is it the right time? Is it a, and often when, 
when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. So a lot of times there are synchronicities that if we're, quote, too busy, we're missing opportunities. There are opportunities that we're missing. So being really aware that when you're ready, opportunities do appear. You have to be willing to see them. So is it the right time? The second question is, is this aligned with my values? There's this opportunity. You and I met, you loved my picture. I'm sitting on the beach. I got a food basket full of healthy food and surfing. And, you know, the energy is aligned. And so is this alignment with my values? And then the third question is, does it have to be me? And this particularly serves to the women that I work with who tend to be recovering overachiever, perfectionist, stuck in the cycle of hustle and overwhelm, who really want to allow more abundance and health, wealth, and love by adding more flow, ease, and joy into their life. And so just because we can do something doesn't mean it has to be us. It doesn't mean we have to say yes. So that would be taking ownership of our time. And the second one, taking ownership of money. So owning that we are the source of money. And what I mean by that is we do get to choose how we get paid, who pays us, what we do for money, and how we allow ourselves what we do with that money. Like we truly are the source of the giving, the receiving, and and it's just an energy what we do with that. So it's really shifting the conversation to the person who says, I don't, I, I can't afford that. I don't have the money for that. It's too expensive. All words that I've removed from my vocabulary and shifting over here to what happens when I allow myself or how do I allow myself to open up to receiving the, these financial resources so that I can pay for this. It's a total mindset shift. And I'll give you a concrete example that that I just personally went through. I hired a, a, a very high level coach for, for me. It was, she was 30 grand and I paid her in full. And I said to myself, I could have said, where is this money going to come from? I'm an entrepreneur. I have to do a launch. I have to do... I. I'm in scarcity. I'm in fear. Instead, what I said is, how am I going to allow myself to open up and receive? The, because the universe is abundant. Mother nature is abundant. The springs will flow and there is a lot of money in the world available to all of us. So how am I going to open up to be a part of receiving it? And I did not fall into the hustle and the grind because that's my old saboteur the hustler, the people pleaser, kind of the martyr, That's that was mine. I did not fall into that. I trusted, I relaxed. I said, I'm open to receiving. How's it going to come? And I took aligned action. I connected with people. People showed up in my life that were new and I made the 60 grand in four weeks, paid her off in full plus, a, a, this is just one example, plus a bonus 30. So I would just say in a nutshell, like your energy is everything. It's all about energetic alignment, getting super clear. It's not a magical woo thing. Um, I wish that it was. I'm very woo, but it's, but it's, it's not, it's, we are not just spiritual. We are physical and spiritual and energetic being. So we, we have a choice to take, to take aligned action with what we're moving towards. Yes. I love everything you just said and I have when you said that about coach I just I just recently did that I I invested ten thousand dollars into a coach and for me that is a lot like my husband has been out of work for six months because he had he could he couldn't walk he had a bulge disc that and he had to have spine surgery mm -hmm. and so that was our primary source of income and that was just taken and I was like okay I can sit here and hyper focus and get into all the scarcity and like the the really scary parts that are very real. Like there's still life. It's very real. And I, but I, instead I chose to step back and be like, what can I do with this? What can I invest in, in myself to project me and take me to that next level? And that's why I'm here. And that's how I'm putting on this amazing event to meet amazing people like you. And it's, it is like you said, when you don't hyper-focus and you don't 
you take back that scarcity and you take back the the fright and the negativity and the and you just release and trust and take that next step because the action is just logically speaking nothing can happen unless you do something so if you start decision, taking decision creates momentum that's how i see it decision yes! creates momentum yeah yes and it's it's empowering too so you not only gain gain confidence you're also stepping forward and moving in towards actionable steps towards your purpose and there's a lot of power in that and yeah and one more thing so you had seven saboteurs I going through those the saber was definitely me but I found myself in a couple of those yeah so what Very common. okay yeah. Would you mind speaking a bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. And and that's very, very common because it's like, every, think of it as like your relationships in your life, right? Like say your parents versus your spouse versus your friends, like every relationship reflects back to you a different part of yourself. Like, so the same two people could say the same thing to you and maybe one lands and they land it lands differently like we're we're every opportunity every relationship is is just reflecting and mirroring back to us and so the money saboteurs the reason that you can probably relate to more than one is because you're thinking about the different experiences and feelings or emotions or thoughts that go with that particular experience so it's an, it's very common that you would say, okay, so I've noticed that sometimes I have the, sometimes I'm the saver and sometimes I'm, what did you say? The people pleaser? Is that what you said? Or the, I'm, the... I'm definitely the people pleaser. Um, I've been the victim. I've definitely dabbled in that early twenties yeah. and then the saver. Yeah. So a lot of it just has to do with the a time in life. And sometimes we do, we get to we get to play with the victim for a little bit. And then thank God we learned from it. And we're like, thank you. And you're no longer welcome. I'm not available for your victim consciousness anymore. And um, so, and same thing with the saver, like maybe, and what I want to say is that, you know, um, I always look at things like we have, we, we get to choose from our healthy self. And sometimes we choose from our survivor strategies, our survivor self. So there's always, an opportunity to make a decision, there's always choice. And a lot of times we, we, we would like to make decisions from our healthy self, which is the person who's in touch with her intuition, the person who's grounded and the person who isn't, she's not reacting, but she's responding to an invitation. And it's not coming from the fear of what might go wrong or what happened in the past. It's very present moment. The survivor st strategy, or some people call it wound itself, the core wound that shows up is when we're not in trust. She's in scarcity and she is reacting because of a previous experience. So your saver is either something that you learned or something that you were taught, or maybe you had a an event in your life where there was scarcity and maybe you lost a bunch of money at some point in time and you needed to save. Um, the other one, uh, the, the victim, maybe there was an opportunity or an experience in your life where somebody did take advantage of you. So it's, it's really recognizing that these are kind of like voices that speak to us, that show us where our growth is and remembering that, if there's a sensation or a feeling that you have around it, emotion is energy in motion. It's just there to kind of show you where the growth edge is. It doesn't say anything about you. It doesn't mean that you will always be a victim or a saver. It's more about helping you identify how you're responding. And then I like to encourage people to make a decision based on who they are becoming versus who they've been. So in other words, I hear that you were a saver and a victim at some point in time. And I also heard you say that you invested 10 grand in a coach because you there was a void, there was something in you that believed that 
you knew in order for me to bring in more income, I need to invest in myself and my business. And this is the choice that I'm making. And it feels like the right time. It's aligned with my values. And this is the right coach for me. So that when we make a decision from that place, it's healthy. When we make a decision for like basic needs, the need to be validated, the need to feel safe, the need to be um, appreciated. Like if it's very needy and there's a lot of attachment, it's from an unhealthy place. So just, there's always going to be different opportunities and we're going to feel a little bit like a different saboteur from one time to another, depending on the experience because of, because we're multidimensional. Every person I know has at least two, right? And so it's really just kind of speaking to you about what's present for you in that moment. And my invitation is just stay present with that and don't get into the story or the fear mm-hmm. about the future. But you can really ask yourself like, um, okay, this is this is a process I use. So what does it say? What does it say about me if I'm the saver? Well, it maybe you say it means that there I have security. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I'll never starve, right? Like there's maybe that's your story. Maybe it's not, but just get super clear on where did the story come from and then come back to the present moment and just kind of recognize that you're not the story it although it did happen, but you get to choose in this moment to step into the energy of who you're becoming And when it comes, because, because money is just an energy, it's just like, it's just like food, thoughts, emotions, words, it's another energy. And we get to choose how it comes in and what we want to do with it. And what I have found lately or over the last year that is um, really liberating is that the less attached we are and the more we trust, the more it flows. Yes, I had a a beautiful interview with another woman where we just talked about our current money situation. So many people, we talk about the success and how hard it was in the past, but we were sitting here talking about what's going on now. And that is what I took most of it is like when you When you hyper-focus, I've noticed that pattern in my past. When you hyper-focus on your your finances, that's when it disappears. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy. I I remember being like, here's my bank statement. Well, I think it depends. (laughs) So it's an interesting belief to explore, right? Because I think, again, it depends on what energy you're coming from. If you're hyper-focused from a place of scarcity and fear, then yes. But if you're hyper-focused on a place of energetic alignment and intention and being intentional, then that may not be true for everybody. Because when I hear you make that statement, hyper-focused on finances, it disappears. That has not been my experience. So so it's a, everything's a belief, right? But again, I think it comes from, are you coming from your survivor self, the scarcity and the fear? Or are you coming, and everybody's just coming from their own experience. It's not right or wrong. It's just like, that's just what it is. But in my experience, where my intention goes energy flows and money is energy. So that's my belief is that when I, when, and I, and I, I never talked about money. I never paid attention to money. And, and I realize now like money's an energy. It deserves to be in the prosperity course that I have. We talk about money, love language. We talk about money, wellness. Like we create a relationship with money to let it know that we have, I appreciate that you're here. And you know what, like what, this is what I'm going to use you for. I'm going to allow you to come to me so that I can then take energetically, I'm going to be intentional. Like, this is how, this is what I'm going to use that I'm going to pay 10 grand for a house to host a retreat in, or I'm going to donate this to this nonprofit, or I'm going to pay for my child's private school. But I feel like maybe you're using the word hyper-focused and maybe there's a little bit of a different energy and maybe hyper-focused isn't the word, but for me, um, when, when I'm intentional, that's when it just keeps flowing in because I'm telling it like, it's more empowering. It's like, yes, you may flow to me. And this is, this is what I'm going to do with you. Um, yes. I don't. Yeah. 
No, I, I absolutely agree. I should have been a thousand percent more clear on my words because I we were talking about the scarcity, like the scarcity time in our lives. And so when there is that scarcity, that's you're absolutely right. And I I fully agree because that is it. And it's hard because it is scary moments and you just have to take yourself out of those really scary emotions and see the facts as hard as that is distract yourself sometimes like if if the emotions are too big distract yourself just and then come back to it and see if you have more clarity because like you said so beautifully clarity when there's clarity it flows yeah for sure yeah and I and it's it's also a practice right like it's a it's not a quick fix um I like I said, it's, it's really never about the money. It really isn't. And so, you know, so many, I mean, I've been in the coaching industry for a long time. I've had a lot of coaches myself and, uh, you know, clients wonder why they hire a money coach or a business coach and they don't get results. Well, it's because it doesn't have anything to do. Like it is nice to get strategy for your business and it's nice to learn how to facilitate money to track it to budget it or whatever but if you haven't done the mindset and if you and and really beyond the mindset like if you haven't really truly embodied and created a sustainable lasting relationship with your own beliefs around money whatever that brings up for you that it's you know what there's so many layers under that then hiring the business and money coach really isn't going to do anything it's like I, I was, I started out health coaching and it was never about the food. It was always the emotional attachment or relationship. It was about the relationship with food. And if we went deeper, it was about the relationship with health. And then deeper than that, the relationship with their body. So money is the tangible thing reflecting back to us, but it's really never about that. I've had coaches and I've been in a room with and worked with and have clients that are seven figure business owners and they can still feel like there's not enough. So scarcity consciousness is, doesn't have anything to do with the amount of tangible money that's in your bank account. It's really a feeling of feeling full and feeling grateful and Mm. living your truth and being aligned, just being in alignment with that. And it gets to be easy. It gets to be joyful. It gets to be fun. It doesn't have, it shouldn't feel like pushing. It shouldn't feel like convincing. It's, um, yeah, it, you know, and it took me 10 years to, to maybe eight years to really, to really learn that. But yeah, so. Yes. And it, like you said, it's a process and it's different for everyone and the alignment, the alignment is key. Like if you do get a coach, make sure what they're saying and what they're doing aligns and what like at your core, what you believe and what aligns with you, because there are so many people promising all these things. And most of the time, or however many times they they can produce that, that's great, but it's because of their clientele that aligns with them. If you don't believe in what that person is saying, it's not going to work for you. Yeah, that's a really good point for both clients and coaches to remember. And and that's the abundant mindset is there's plenty for everyone. So get super clear and only like I'm super clear about what I'm not available for. And I wasn't, you know, I think when you're starting out in the coaching business, maybe you feel uh, unsure or maybe you even have desperate moments or you need the money or you need money and Maybe you don't believe you have the flexibility to be super picky, but I have found getting really clear. I broke my first, I broke my first contract about a year ago with a client who was really misaligned and it was really hard to do because of my martyr. I have to remember, I'm not here to save and fix people, but it was really misaligned energetically and and the the payments weren't coming through anyway. So that was really easy. Um, But it's just getting clear on like, who's not your client too. And who is your, you know, who is your ideal client? Because it's just that clarity piece um, that we, 
with that aligns with our values. And I think that's, that is super important to allow yourself to attract and call into a similar energy, people with similar values who see the world in the way that you do. And, you know, if you're looking to hire a coach, look for a person who has your same values and who's also doing or done what you want to do. When I hired my coach, she's not on Instagram. So, and I actually really like, I, I don't get clients from social media. Mine's uh, all word of mouth, all referrals. I've built a very consistent, successful six figure business just on results. And I really liked that she built a seven figure business without an Instagram account. I was like, that's cool. So, you know, and, and she had a degree in marketing, which was a plate. Just, I didn't know anything about marketing because I've never had to market. So it's kind of, kind of those things. Cause we're not for everyone and not everyone is for us. And when we step into relationships that are misaligned, it can be really draining. And, you know, I have the most amazing private client right now. I couldn't have dreamed of her. She's so, she's like, so amazing. And that's really, and I, I've have, I've had a lot of amazing private clients and I, but I just got this new one that I'm just like, wow, it's just like kind of next level showing, you know, just showing me the work that I get to do. And it's, um, it feels, it should feel really aligned and, and it should feel ease, easeful. And we get to choose that. And that, that, Money listens to that. Money is an energy that follows and it wants to be appreciated and it wants to be used. And he, she, whatever you want to name, like we in our program, we go on money dates, we write a money love story, we do a completion letter, we do a lot of relationship nurturing and building. Um, we do a lot of shadow work around money, but it's just like it's just like any other relationship that wants to be nurtured and seen and heard. And so that's what we do in the prosperity courses, facilitate that relationship fully, acknowledging the old stories, where they came from, acknowledging the saboteurs, acknowledging the money blocks and the way that we've showed up, um, acknowledging the money wellness and money love language that we have and the actions that we take. We We talk about basic human needs. We talk about like attachment style theory, how that shows up in a relationship with money. We talk about the four levels of financial freedom. And we just, we talk about, well, why does this even matter anyways? Why do I even care? Cause we get to amplify our why. And my word for the year for 2023 is resourced. And money is a way that we're resourced. Food, water, love, money is another way that we are resourced. And so we talk about that and creating, like, what is your imprint? Soul wisdom imprinting. There's a six-step process, but what is your what is your imprint on the world? And what is your um, legacy, you know, to take it a step further? Yes, that is amazing and so needed because, like we talked about at the beginning, money saboteurs are prevalent, like, we all have had it in one form or another throughout our lives. And so it's important to see it and recognize it and love it and cure, create that relationship with it to take yourself to that next level with yourself and your business. And that's the dream. That's that's entrepreneur dream is to take it to the next step and grow and be better humans. Put more good stuff out in the world. Yes. Sure. And money wants to come to that. It wants to be like, yes, I will be used to help you to create more opportunities for other women or whoever your audience is for children, for like it, it being intentional is important because money, just like, just like everyone loves feeling valued, right? Money wants to be valued and utilized for, for good in the world. So yes. we get to do that as entrepreneurs, which is where it becomes really fun. It does. And more to that, you have a lovely gift for our audience. Would you like to share? I do. I have the Prosperity Roadmap ebook, which is going to help you to build a foundation for the word that I used to get to financial freedom is prosperity, which is really an energy. 
Um, so I have I have that ebook that I'd like to share with the audience. And because we talked about it today, I'll also throw in the Money Saboteur ebook just so that people can help, uh, so they can remember. And I I will also if if three things isn't too much. I will share the money blocks list because I think that the three of them, since we talked specifically about that on the show today, I think looking at the three of those together would be super helpful. You can kind of go through the list and notice like, what do I say or what do I believe? What are my thoughts and beliefs? And then you can look at the sab the saboteur guide and notice like, what are the behaviors or the patterns that I notice? What are the things that I say? Um, how do I show up, you know, or even start noticing, do I notice other people showing up this way? And I think that would be super helpful to just include all three. So I'm happy to do that. Aloha, I am Jen Mons, one of the guest speakers for the Gain Control of Your Business Finances Telesummit coming up. And I'm super excited to share with you some mindset tricks for stepping into prosperity consciousness. I have a special gift for you when you join. I'll be sharing with you my Prosperity Roadmap bundle, which includes three eBooks, Create Your Prosperity Roadmap, The Money Blocks, and The Saboteurs that come up. And with this, you'll also receive three full one-hour webinars, Create Your Prosperity Roadmap, which is gonna help you to amplify your why, understand your money blocks, awaken your money origin story. And then we're gonna dive into the money saboteurs. And then I also have a bonus class for you on money wellness. So I'm looking forward to sharing this with you. This is a gift offering for all of the guests. You can buy it on my website for 220, but I'm offering this Prosperity Roadmap Bundle as a gift offering for you. Aloha. That is so generous. Thank you so much, Jen. I think the audience will love it and they're going to gobble it up because this has been incredible and like helping me work through things that I didn't even understand and put words to it. So thank you. I This has My so pleasure. much value and uh, this is amazing. How can our audience get a hold of you? Yeah, so um, thanks for asking. My website is Jen Mons. So that's M is in Mary, O, Nancy, N is in Nancy, and then S is in Sam. So jenmons.com. I have a podcast called Body and Soul Wisdom. And uh, you can go to jenmons.com forward slash tribe to check out whatever my latest offering is. And on that website, you can see several of the courses and retreats that I offer. And I'm also on Instagram at jen.mons. I'm on all the social media. I shouldn't say all, but Facebook, Jen Mons Coaching, LinkedIn, and um, YouTube as well, sharing the podcast. So wonderful. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time today, Jen. This has been amazing. And thanks for spilling the tea with me. Absolutely. <laughs>